So, the field of data is changing rapidly every single day. What used to be an underrated field with little to no attention to its name is now probably the most hyped field of the 21st century. Among all these changes, big companies like Google, IBM, and Meta have come up with certifications that you can take just to give you a head start. I've personally taken dozens of certifications, some good, some bad, and some amazing. And in this video, we're gonna talk about three certifications that I've taken from Google that might just boost your career. We'll be talking about all the benefits, the downfalls, and who should be taking these certifications. I'll also be going into some key steps that you can take to maximize these certifications and help you land a job. All right, first let's talk about the Google Data Analytics certification. So I took this certification just about over a year ago and I remember at the time debating to myself if this was going to be worth it or beneficial to me and will it help me land a job. I want to start off by answering the most frequent question I get, uh, that is, is this certification going to be able to replace my degree? In my opinion, this certification alone will not be able to replace your four-year degree or diploma. It's an entry-level certification that's meant to be an introductory course to data analytics and doesn't quite dive deep enough to statistics and mathematics. However, this certification definitely did help me land several job offers, and I talk about that more at the end of the video. Me personally, I think it's a very good stepping stone to those of you who are interested in exploring the field of data. It lays down the foundational knowledge you need to get started with your own projects, enhance your skill set, and also uh, pique some curiosity within yourself to learn more. The estimated duration of this course is about six months, but it took me less than a month to complete the whole thing. I spent on average eight hours a day between semesters trying to finish this course, so please take that into account. I like to take courses together just so I can bundle them up and save more money and maximize my output. When it comes to the skills and tools you learn from this course, you'll be introduced to stuff like uh, R, Google Sheets, BigQuery, and Tableau. I'm a big fan of the tool coverage of this course. The only thing I would change is the programming language of choice. I personally prefer Python instead of R. I think it's more commonly used in the field of data, so keep that in mind. You will also learn all types of data analyst skills, like how to mine and clean data, how to process and visualize data in visualizing tools, and how to share that insights to stakeholders. They split the teachings of the skills into smaller courses, summing up to eight in total. Each course has quizzes, labs, and assessments that will help you practice and understand each skill better. The nice thing about this is if you're already familiar with the material being taught, you can go ahead and take the quiz at the end of each section just to bypass it and move on to the next one. In my opinion, the way this course is taught is very beginner friendly with an emphasis on detailed steps at each stage. They go into the various different questions you should be asking and how you should be thinking in each phase. They teach all these different skills through their suggested data analyst workflow, which I think is pretty cool. Again, I talk more about this workflow in a different video, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. In my opinion, the biggest benefit of this course is the case study at the end. For those of you who are just getting into the field of data, this is a great opportunity for you to get your hands dirty and experience some real world data analyst work. There are two options in terms of case studies and you aren't required to complete either one to obtain your certification. However, I do recommend you complete at least one. I personally did both case studies as I wanted as much value as I could get from these courses and I believe these case studies helped me get my first job. The benefit of these case studies are that they are pretty detailed uh, involving some real world experiences and require you to think really deeply and use the data analyst workflow that they suggested to solve the problem. You also get to showcase all the skills you've learned throughout the course, which is amazing. I personally use these case studies to jumpstart my data portfolio, which helped me out tremendously. Obviously, these case studies are amazing in the eyes of any employer, so you can use that as a selling point during your interviews. The goal here is to inspire you to do more projects on your own and hopefully encourage you to improve your skill set uh, consistently. Also, for those of you who get stuck at this stage, they do provide a sample roadmap on how you can tackle this problem with some sample code. Now, the biggest flaw of this course, like I said before, is the absence of Python education. Now, that being said, they recently released an advanced data analytics uh, certification that is taught in Python, so I guess they did hear our feedback. I also believe that the certification sells the expectation that you'll learn all the skills you need to secure a job. I personally think that might be a stretch. They definitely do give you enough to get started. However, I think you need to put in some time to do some additional learning to secure that job. I think this course should be targeted to people who aren't familiar with the field of data and are interested in learning more. Maybe they want to learn some foundational skills to get started and provide some data-driven insights to themselves, their family members, or even some stakeholders. If you're already familiar with the basics and know some programming, this certification might not be for you. However, Google did just launch a more advanced version of the certification, which incorporates uh, machine learning and also statistical skills, which might be a more valuable certification for you. The advanced title here just basically means data science. The estimated duration of this course, according to them, is six months at a pace of 10 hours a week, but I personally think you can get it done way sooner. They break the certification down into seven different courses, but I found the most value from course four onwards. For those of you who are coming in fresh right after finishing the previous certification, or maybe you have little to no experience, I recommend you start with course one. My favorite thing about this certification is that it's taught in Python. Again, I have nothing against languages like R or MATLAB. I just think Python is more frequently used in the industry, and I like the syntax a little better. It's also much more versatile, and I think it's very beginner friendly in terms of machine learning. The goal when you're picking your first language is to find something that is easy to learn and you can stick with for your entire learning process. I like to pick a language that is easy to learn, used in the industry, and also has a lot of supporting documentation. 
Throughout my formal education at school, we switched between a lot of different languages like R and MATLAB very frequently, which didn't really help. I personally think you should just pick a language and stick with it and dive deep. Learning a new language tends to be easier than expanding in one you already know. I also like that they teach you one of the most used analysis techniques that is exploratory data analysis. Unlike the entry level certification, this one goes into some statistical analysis techniques that we use in the field such as hypothesis testing, probability distributions, confidence intervals, and many other skills that we use on a daily basis. They also briefly talk about some data ethics and privacy issues that are commonly overlooked in the field of data. As I mentioned before, the field is constantly changing and there needs to be people who are qualified to define certain rules or ensure they stay in place. I also like how they dove deep into machine learning, talking about the different subsets uh, such as supervised versus unsupervised learning and other best practices. Last but not least, there's an amazing capstone project at the end to help you solidify your skills. It's a good way to showcase what you learn and get your hands dirty in machine learning. I think it's a very good foundational project in machine learning that will allow you to explore more complicated topics such as a churn reduction, time series forecasting, customer segmentation, etc. One thing I would like to point out is that they didn't go into too much detail when it comes to machine learning. If you were to work in the industry as a data scientist or machine learning engineer, you definitely would need some more experience when it comes to advanced machine learning models. I personally recommend taking Andrew Ng's machine learning specialization on Coursera if you're interested in uh, increasing or improving your machine learning game. For those of you who don't know, Andrew Ng is one of the father figures of machine learning in the 21st century, so I definitely recommend you check him out. This course is targeted for people who are more interested in securing a job in the field of data, especially when it comes to more advanced roles such as data scientists or machine learning engineers. I recommend you pair the certification with the entry-level data analytics certification from Google if you're interested in getting started and you're just a beginner. For those of you who are more advanced, I recommend you pair this with uh, more advanced courses from deeplearning.ai. They should definitely give you enough knowledge for you to work on some cool projects on the side and also start applying for jobs. All right, the last certification we're gonna be talking about in this video is the Google Business Intelligence Certification. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the uh, business intelligence role, it's a subset of the data science field that is catered more towards the business front. BI professionals typically deal with descriptive analysis using historical data to derive some insights. For example, maybe sales are down and the stakeholder needs to know why. Or maybe we just had our best month and the stakeholder wants to understand which products were our best selling products and why. BI professionals tend to depend on BI tools such as uh, Power BI, Tableau, or even Looker. They primarily deal with static and uh, structured data and their deliverables are usually reports or dashboards. The goal here is to identify patterns and trends that can turn data into insights which drive business outcomes. You might notice that there's a lot of overlap between these career paths, but I think the primary difference is the uh, domain knowledge needed. BI professionals typically possess a lot more domain knowledge within the specific industry. For example, a BI professional might be required to understand what key metrics a stakeholder needs to see without even them asking. They then would need to provide detailed dashboards or reports with these metrics so their stakeholders can take action. Great, now that we understand what the BI profession is, let's dive into the Google Business Intelligence Certification. I personally audited the certification and from someone who has been actively working in the field of data, I think there's a lot of value to be gained here. It starts off by going into the foundations of BI, a basic overview of the teams and a high level insight of what to expect. What I personally like about this course is that it emphasizes the importance of asking questions and specific asking the right questions. I've talked about the importance of curiosity in the field of data and how asking the right questions can get you ahead and I'm super glad that Google put the time and effort in to teach this skill. The next few courses talk about the Google data flow, some basic data optimization and management skills, and also the ETL process. ETL stands for extract, transform, and load, which is a common process that any data analyst or scientist should know. I'm honestly surprised that ETL wasn't mentioned in any of the previous courses, or maybe I just missed it. I believe the BI tool of choice here was Tableau, which isn't bad, but I wish they went with Looker instead. I have nothing against Tableau. In fact, a lot of companies are looking for people with experience in Tableau. However, I'm surprised they didn't use Looker, which was acquired by Google in 2019. I think Looker and LookML are exceptional skills to have if you want to work at a startup or become a data engineer. There's also a BI dashboard project at the end, which is great because a lot of BI positions require some experience building dashboards beforehand. However, I recommend you take this a step further to set yourself apart and uh, record yourself presenting that BI dashboard you just built and posting it on platforms like YouTube, GitHub, Kaggle, or even LinkedIn. This will give you a massive advantage because now an employer can see how good you are at communicating insights. Hopefully you also get some feedback from these presentations just so you know what you can work on for your interviews. I've personally been offered a couple BI positions in the past and I think it's an exceptionally underrated career path. Overall, this was an amazing course and it was pretty short too, which is nice. I believe the expected duration was two months with a pace of 10 hours a week, but I'm pretty sure you can get it done way sooner. Just to preface, this video is sponsored by Coursera. I personally use Coursera almost every single day. My friends use it, my family use it, and I think it's a very good platform to learn.
I'll leave some referral links to all the certifications I mentioned in this video, just in case you guys want to check them out and try it for yourself. At the time of this recording, the Coursera Plus plan is about $49 a month. For those of you who can afford it, Coursera happens to offer a lot of scholarships that you can apply for. And they also have a seven day free trial that you can check out. With the Coursera Plus plan, you can check out multiple certifications at the same time, which can ultimately improve your learning. I personally like to take two certifications at the same time, just in case I get bored so I can pivot to the other one. These days, a lot of big companies are loosening up their hiring requirements, allowing candidates from uh, boot camps or certifications to be hired. My final thoughts on these certifications is that they definitely do not give you all the tools of the trade, but then again, neither does a bachelor's or master's degree. The industry just happens to grow so fast that it's almost impossible for you to learn everything from a single course. That is why it's super important for you to explore these skills by yourself and to stay consistent. I managed to leverage these certifications and use the big name Google during my interviews, which ultimately helped me land a job. You could leverage these certifications too by displaying them on your LinkedIn profile, your resume, and also your portfolio. After speaking to a bunch of mentors and hiring managers, I learned that these certifications are meant to help you stand out, especially if you can verify these skills. The other benefit of these certifications is the deep network that it comes with uh, surrounding over 150 companies. All three of these certifications also come with resume reviews, interview preparations, and also career support. I also noticed that these uh, certifications emphasize on the importance of creating a portfolio, which I can't stress enough. I've personally had a portfolio now for almost two years, and and it's helped me secure over a dozen jobs. I made a video talking about how I made my portfolio in under 10 minutes completely for free. So if you're interested, feel free to check that out. Overall, I think these certifications are definitely worth the money, especially if you leverage the Coursera Plus plan. Individually, these certifications are definitely a good starting point, but collectively, I think they make you stand out and can enhance your career significantly. Anyways, that's all I have for now. If you guys had any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.